Disney is a place full of joy and wonder, where magic comes to life. But on the other hand, the beloved theme parks have an unknown dark side. Throughout the years, there have been numerous terrifying reports of ghosts, hauntings, deaths, and other unsettling incidents at the amusement parks. From dumping ashes onto the rides, to some of the park's most gruesome tragedies, these are the deaths and ghosts of Disney parks. I want to be clear that this video does get disturbing, and it mentions actual awful incidents that happened to people at Disney alongside some more urban legendy things. I just want that to be known before you come in, because this first one is really disturbing. On July 8th, 1974, a horrible incident occurred at the America Sings ride. An 18-year-old employee, Deborah Gale Stone, met her grim demise at the infamous attraction a mere nine days after it went public. She'd taken a job at a hostess at Disneyland to raise money for her college tuition. Her duty was to welcome every new crowd while they sat in the theater before the show, and then bid them farewell when it ended. It's vital to cover how this ride operates to understand Stone's grisly end. The attraction was at the Carousel Theater. The building had six stages, linked by divider walls, which could turn around every two to four minutes. The walls shifted towards each other on the stage's left side and then locked in position to split each stage from the rest. In layman's terms, it functioned like a merry-go-round. Each show lasted 24 minutes, and once they concluded, the ride operators had 45 seconds to get everything ready for the upcoming run. If you've been to Disney World and gone to the Carousel of Progress ride, it's pretty much the same thing as that. On the day of her passing, Stone was brutally crushed between two of the building's walls during this brief period. As it turns out, there was a tight opening that allowed the stages to move between one of its motionless walls and a rotating wall. Unfortunately, Stone somehow ended in that crevice and it killed her at 10.37pm. Many believe that she may have stepped back or fallen or attempted to leap onto another stage as the wall was moving. However, speculation aside, it was never determined how exactly Stone found herself in this distressful situation. A park goer in an adjoining theater, 33-year-old Daniel Robinson, heard the the girl's screams as the wall crushed her. The man told the authorities that he had seen Stone get crushed between the stage and the wall, which is when he began hearing her scream. Robinson immediately made the Disney staff aware of the accident. When they were resetting the ride at 11pm, Robinson and the operators found her, but sadly, Stone was already deceased. Following her demise, Disney temporarily closed the attraction as they investigated a disaster that they believed to be impossible. While the ride was out of commission, Disney installed safety lights and cleaned out the spot where Stone died. Three days later, America Sings was back up and running. Soon after the incident, the park made the theater walls breakable to prevent another accident. In response to their loss, Stone's parents stated that they chose to sue Disneyland, though they didn't blame the park for their daughter's death, and some months later, they settled for an unknown amount. Her father Bill said, It was a small settlement. It certainly wasn't for money. It was to make sure that changes and improvements were made on that particular ride, and any others that needed it if there was any kind of danger present. Fourteen years later, on April 10th, 1988, Disney put an end to America Sings. The story of Disneyland's most brutal accident is haunting, but we can take solace in the fact that the public hasn't forgotten about Stone, and neither has her family. When remembering her daughter, her mother Marilyn said, A lesson that I learned is that you really need to make sure your relationships with people are right, because you never know how long that person's going to be here. I'm so thankful that we always had a wonderful relationship with our daughter. She was very loving and very kind. You hear about people's problems with their teenagers, but we never had that with Deborah. Bill stated, Sometimes she would come to us, and she would weep over friends of her, who had maybe gone into drugs, or she would see what was happening to some people, even people she didn't know, and say, what can I do to help them? That was Debbie. May Deborah rest in peace, and may those affected by her passing heal their emotional wounds, and keep her legacy alive at all costs. Unfortunately, through the internet, Deborah's passing has kind of garnered a creepypasta sort of status to it because of how disturbing the nature of her death was. A video on YouTube exists claiming to show the footage of her being crushed, but it's completely fake and honestly incredibly disrespectful. There is no footage of it, so any footage claiming to show it is completely fake. As for the second story, we have the controversial launch of Mission Space. Designed to simulate what an astronaut may feel like on a rocket ship, venturing to Mars, making it a very intense experience. So there's the Mars mission, or Orange mission. Here, passengers get a taste of gravity's regular force doubled. On the other hand, there's another mission, the Earth mission, or Green mission, which offers a tamer adventure. In the 20 years since its inception, the attraction has earned itself an unrivaled level of notoriety. Like every ride, mission space is a minimum height requirement. If you want to go on the Orange mission, you must be at least 44 inches. If you want to go on the Green mission, you must be 40 inches or more. Throughout the attraction, at least a dozen warning signs can be seen. Aside from these, there are video and audio warnings. These alerts notify people who hate simulations spinning, confined dark spaces, and are susceptible to motion sickness, that they should avoid riding. These same caution signs indicate that mission space may produce disorientation, nausea, dizziness, or a headache. They also mention that anyone who suffers from inner ear problems, headaches, motion sickness, vertigo, migraines, or anxiety shouldn't ride. 
For safety, you should be in good health and free of high blood pressure, heart, back, or neck problems, motion sickness, or other conditions that can be aggravated by this adventure. Lastly, some warnings order attendees to keep their heads flat on their headrests. If a park goer disobeys this demand, the right centrifugal motion may lead to unpleasant effects like headache or dizziness, but in some cases it caused devastating situations. From the summer of 2005 to the summer of 2006, 194 individuals were treated by AMTs following the ride. Most of these people were over the age of 55 and mainly struggled with vomiting, nausea, and dizziness. Of these 194, some had more concerning complications. 26 had trouble breathing, 25 fainted, and 16 suffered chest pain or irregular heartbeats. However, two unfortunate souls died after riding because of their pre-existing illnesses. One was a 49-year-old female, and the other was a 4-year-old boy. On June 13th, 2005, Dadi Bamuwamye and his mother Agnes hopped on the mission space ride. Immediately, she knew something was awry as her son's body was stiff and his legs spread out. Despite her worry, she simply believed that Dadi was scared and took his hand to calm him. But during the hectic experience, Dadi passed out, and once it came to a close, he was unresponsive and limp. Agnes quickly removed him from the attraction spacecraft, and a park worker rushed to help the distraught woman place her son on a bench. Together, they initiated CPR while they waited for medical professionals. When they arrived, paramedics took over and continued attempting to revive the boy, but to no avail, as he died shortly after at the local hospital. Disney temporarily shut down the ride and reopened it the next day after determining nothing was wrong. In addition, authorities stated that Dowdy had met the minimum height requirement. The following day, an autopsy showed that there was no indication of trauma, which meant more tests had to take place to determine why the little boy tragically passed. Months later, an updated autopsy revealed that the child's death was caused by cardiac arrhythmia due to myocardial hypotrophy, which essentially means he had an enlarged heart. His ailment made him an easy target for a sudden death in such a high-stress environment. This idiopathic condition was undiagnosed at the time of his Disney trip. A year later, his parents sued Disney for a wrongful death and negligence, alleging that the park should have prevented their son from riding since he didn't meet the minimum high requirements. Requirements. They also claimed that Disney failed to give the poor boy medical attention when he fell unconscious. In October 2006, the family settled with the corporation and dropped the case in early 2007. But only two months before Dottie's parents filed the lawsuit on April 11th, Hiltred Blumel was transported to the hospital after going on the Orange Mission, where she died a day later. The woman had hypertension issues, and the ride's sheer intensity caused her to have a stroke. An autopsy confirmed the hospital diagnosis of hypertensive bleeding within the brain. There was evidence of severe, long-standing high blood pressure. There was no evidence of trauma. Disney shut down the attraction for two days and had it back up and running on the 13th, once they deduced that it was safe to ride. Despite these terrible deaths, mission space remains open to this day. One can only be thankful that incidents like this are rare, and hope that it stays that way. May Dottie and Hiltrud rest in peace. From my personal experience, Mission Space has always felt like a ride where I could get injured, and that's largely due in part to playground rumors of people losing their memories or getting awfully injured or killed on the ride. However, when actually riding the ride, it feels like your body is doing things that it should not be doing. It's a very thrilling attraction, but regardless of that, it's very, very intense. Now, going back to Disneyland, we have one of the first tragic incidents to take place in one of the parks, and this is the death of Mark Maples. On May 15th, 1964, 15-year-old Mark Maples got in line to ride the Matterhorn bobsleds with two buddies at around midnight. This attraction was one of Disney's first roller coasters, and it was fast, with many twists and turns, inside of a snowy mountain. Given its high velocity, ride operators instructed park goers to wear lap belts on their bobsleds to avoid any problems. When it was their turn to hop on, Maples sat between his friends, and since it was dark, they couldn't see well. As the bobsled started going down the mountain, one of Mark's buddies felt a bump, which he believed was Mabel's. He told the media, there was no way to tell what he was doing. It's kind of a bumpy ride. I was looking up, heard a noise, looked down and recognized Mark's sweater as he was falling out the ride, said his other friend. The exact details of what transpired that night are uncertain, but Disney theorizes that Mark undid his seatbelt and stood up while the ride was moving, at an estimated rate of 20 miles per hour. He then seemingly hit his head on the concrete mountain's side and fell vertically about one foot, laying beside the track of the sled. The following day, Mark's dad stated that the park staff didn't believe his friends when they said he had fallen out. It wasn't until two girls who were on the ride behind them verified the story before it was shut down. When EMTs came to the scene, Maples was out cold, and immediately taken to the hospital for critical head trauma. The teenager was placed on a ventilator, and unfortunately succumbed to his injuries only four days later. Despite their best efforts, investigators could never establish what occurred that fateful night, as Mark's death was eventually ruled as an accident. His passing is marked as the first in Disneyland's history. May he rest in peace. 
So what we've just talked about here are very, very real things that happen to real people. And the weight of the situation can't be overstated. These events are absolutely awful and traumatizing to everyone who witnessed them and completely scarring to the families involved. And I want to make that known. What happened to these people is incredibly terrifying and traumatic. And because of this, I want to give just a quick moment of silence for the victims involved. May they all rest easy. As for our fourth story, we have the ghost of George in Pirates of the Caribbean. We are now moving into the urban legend side of things, so the vibe is going to change a little bit. A paranormal urban legend has surrounded the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disney World for many, many years. This myth is about George, who is suspected to be a troublesome ghost that's haunted the attraction for decades. There are multiple adaptations of his tale, but they all generally abide by the story, that George was a former construction worker who helped build the ride, and while he was working, he either fell or was crushed by some sort of large object, like a beam, which immediately killed him. Some versions of the urban legend claim that the ride's tall tower crushed George, which is in the title of George's Tower. It also stated that his initials are carved into that tower, and any attempt to get rid of them are pointless as they keep coming back regardless of their efforts to remove them. Soon after Disney opened the ride, a depressed older woman occasionally visited the attraction and requested to ride it by herself. Ride operators would allegedly witness her talking to herself and uncontrollably crying. This woman was believed to be George's grieving mother. Since his death, George has been known to haunt the ride and torture the employees and park goers alike, unless they pay their respects. Well. George isn't evil, he's certainly naughty. According to the urban myth, Disney staff must wish the spirit a good morning when they begin their workday, and bid him goodbye when they're preparing to leave at night. If they fail to comply, George will make their jobs a nightmare by making the attraction act up during the day. Some employees will blame these errors on the night shift workers for failing to say farewell to the ghost in the previous night. If riders behave poorly, George will discipline them by damaging the attraction. George also particularly enjoys haunting women, as some feeble attendees have allegedly felt someone touch their behinds or pull their bra straps. When looking for the culprit, these ladies find no one, and are left bewildered. Other editions of the urban legend share some of George's additional ghostly hijinks. However, while these myths are very, very detailed, no definitive proof of George's existence has ever been found. Since 2005, there have not been many known reports about the specter's antics. The Pirates of the Caribbean ride's breakdowns are no longer an issue, and there's never been a confirmed death of a construction worker while the ride was being built. But this doesn't necessarily mean that George doesn't exist. Every ghost story is rooted in some sort of truth, and George's tale is likely no different. If you're ever on this ride, ensure that you behave well so the spirit doesn't mess with you. Thinking of Disney makes me think of food. Turkey legs, Mickey pretzels, churros, whatever. And thinking of that makes me think of today's sponsor, HelloFresh. This spring, you've got places to be, and ideally, you don't want to be in a kitchen all evening. So, you might as well leave your meal planning and grocery shopping to HelloFresh. With the quick and easy recipes and 15 minute meals delivered right to you, you'll save on a lot of time and hassle. With HelloFresh, you know you're getting top grade food because it comes from the farm to your door in less than 7 days. Whether you're trying to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help all three. Join America's number one meal kit today and say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price that you'll like, delivered right to your door. If you're like me and feel hungry all the time, go ahead and add some snacks, breakfast, or quick lunches to your order. Just simply go on the HelloFresh market and make your pick from what you'd like to add to your box. For me, HelloFresh just makes things so much more convenient, and it's truly a lifesaver when I need to eat something in a pinch. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Go to the link in my description and use code RAYMUNDO16FM and receive 16 free meals plus dessert for life while subscription is active. For our fifth story, we have the Tower of Terror Ghost. A former Disney cast member has haunted the Tower of Terror for ages. The employees of this attraction are bellhops, considering the tower is a hotel ride. This ride is four loading docks. Charlie, Bravo, Alpha, and Delta. These platforms load onto two drop shafts, Foxtrot and Echo. A long time ago, one of these bellhops was working Delta and boarding visitors onto the ride. Out of nowhere, the man collapsed and died. The cause of his death is still unknown, and despite his sudden passing, the ride was never closed. When the park shut down for the night, bellhops must ensure that the ride is functioning properly and would have to ride each platform individually. The issue was riding Delta. Park staff would ride Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie first, then go on Delta together because the dead bellhop allegedly haunted the stuff. While no one has ever claimed that he's dangerous, like George, his goal was to mess with the workers as they were riding Delta. It would suddenly stop at random intervals. The lights would also flicker. Certain cast members have stated that the specter could be spotted in the tower's boiler room. They'd catch a glimpse of it from the corner of their eye, but once they tried to look at it straight, it vanished. 
a supposed video of the spirit has been captured at the ride. While there's no concrete evidence to support the validity of the story, just be aware if you're ever on this ride and board the Delta platform. Speaking of found ghost footage, our next story is actually about exactly that. In the decades since the founding of Disneyland and Disney World, several ghosts have been recorded on video. However, none are as well known as Mr. One Way, the Fireworks Ghost, the Rock Ghost, and Walt Disney's Ghost. A park goer waiting to go on the Space Mountain ride began talking to a ginger man who was kind but seemed a little odd because he wasn't up to date with all the recent changes that Disneyland had made. Others had labeled him as a young teenager wearing clothes from the 70s. Once their turn came, the rider sat next to the red-headed man, and when the roller coaster finished moving, he noticed that the man was gone. He instantly notified the ride operators as they were baffled and they told him that no one was with him. He just interacted with Mr. One Way, a phantom who talks to individuals waiting in line and rides with the lonely passengers. He vanishes before the ride ends, hence why he's named Mr. One Way. Security cameras have caught the purported Wraith on video, sitting with a single male to ride the attraction. Given the attention the spirit attracted, Disney eventually published a statement where the company denied its existence, and clarified that the images and videos of the specter were created with special effects in post-production. On June 26, 2021, TikTok user MyCinema135 uploaded a video where a ghost could be spotted on top of the Sleeping Beauty Castle at Disneyland during the night's fireworks show. Disney guests saw a ghost during the fireworks show. Did you miss it? I'm going to show you one more time. Deep behind the castle wall, they notice this figure. Depending on how one perceives the footage, the phantom may look like a giant or a person of average height. If that's a real ghost, it must be enormous, says a commenter. But it appears like the more plausible option is correct. The original video titled Ghost Watches Fireworks from Disneyland Castle was uploaded on September 18th, 2009, and the recording shows it's a person, yet many remain divided on the subject. Some have even claimed that it's Walt Disney's ghost. One user wrote, if this were a real ghost, I hope it's Walt's. A YouTube commenter offered its explanation for the supposed specter. Yeah, sorry. I know it feels awesome to think you caught a real ghost, but as others said, it's a conductor with a suit meant to blend with the night sky, but the firework lighting made it visible. Another explained, this person is a Disney cast member wearing a camo costume to blend with the night sky. He's there for safety and also to make sure that none of the shells from the fireworks go into the parts of Fantasyland. On a Disney forum, some claimed that the footage looked that way because of double exposure and that it had been superimposed. However, despite the many theories around this video, the spirit in the video is most likely an employee responsible for supervising the fireworks show. Their identity is shrouded in mystery, and we'll probably never know who was atop that castle. But at least it's not a ghost. During a photo shoot at Snow White's Grotto, a video was recorded that at a glance shows an inexplicable figure. As the camera moves up towards the statue of Snow White, the puzzling entity can be seen. Many believe that this is the ghost of a person who died at the park, and others think it's simply the grotto's surrounding environment, but not much else is known about the sighting. In 2009, the Disneyland Resort surveillance cameras captured footage of what many believe to be Walt Disney's ghost walking around the Haunted Mansion and the Rivers of America rides at night. The peculiar being phases through fences and even walks on water. The most spying chilling of all is the figure's human like shape. User Ghosts at Disneyland uploaded a video on YouTube on September 15th, 2009, where it amassed millions of views over the following years. The description reads, I've heard people talk about ghosts around Disneyland late at night. Am I crazy, or does it look like there's a ghost walking around the park? Expectedly, the audience had mixed opinions. Some saw this as a legitimate proof, while others viewed it as another hoax. Years later, in 2015, it started making rounds again, reigniting discussions surrounding the eerie clip. Many onlookers stated that the recording looked like that because Disney was reusing VHS surveillance tapes. One Redditor wrote, Maybe they were still reusing VHS tapes, and that static image came from the previous recordings, like a janitor or something. It is compelling in any case. Another replied, So a few years ago they were still using VHS? It's hard to believe that Disney would not have gone digital by then. Whether it's Walt Disney's ghost or simply an After Hours employee will forever be an enigma. However, one can hope the beloved man has been able to see how his creations have touched countless people around the world. Another thing I'd like to mention is a ride that Disney used to have that was known to be traumatizing and scary. This was Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter. Back in the early 1990s, Disney was in need of rides that appealed to an older audience. Their current loadout of attractions weren't hitting the spot for thrill seekers, which Michael Eisner, the CEO at the time, wanted to change. This resulted in the most horrifying and traumatizing ride Disney had ever created. This ride was initially conceptualized to be a ride that was based off of Ridley Scott's Alien. Disney Imagineers felt that that concept was too dark for the Magic Kingdom, so it later changed to follow the story of XS Tech and their teleportation technology. The ride's initial test run shocked and disturbed its patrons. 
many of them complaining about how horrifying the ride really was. You'd think that this would make Disney want to tone down the horror, but rather, they actually made it even scarier, upping the atmosphere and the vibe of the ride to be much, much scarier and dramatic. Something that's also incredibly strange about this ride was a promotional video created by Disney for the ride, which included interviews from alleged real UFO abductees, which shared some genuinely disturbing stories that were treated as fact in the documentary. In fact, parents complained regarding the way the information was shared in the documentary, fearing that the information would be harmful to the developing minds of young children, which made Disney pull syndication of the doc. It then became lost media, until it resurfaced on the internet many years later. Some have their own theories regarding the documentary, claiming that they have been trying to tell us something with this documentary and ride, which, as fun as it sounds, I don't really buy. Anyway, Alien Encounter went live, and it was truly like nothing else. The ride used state-of-the-art haptics that made every special effect feel incredibly real. This resulted in intense fear from most people who rode the ride, but especially those who didn't know what they were getting into. The ride story was basically that you were being shown an example of an incredible teleportation system created by the fictional XS Tech. Something goes horribly wrong, and instead of teleporting their chairman to your theater, they teleport a rabid, hungry alien. This alien soon escapes his teleportation tube and causes all the energy to go out. During this time, the theater was pitch black. You can only rely on your senses for what was going on. You'd hear screams ringing out from all over the theater. The alien would fly around, wings flapping air on everybody. The alien would also land on patrons, which they could actually feel with special effects on their shoulder bars and chairs. Eventually, after the alien messed with the audience a good bit, a technician would walk through the building to try and get the power back on. This was an actual living Disney cast member, who would actually shine a flashlight into the audience from above. A feed of his night vision goggles was shown on screens throughout the theater. Eventually, the alien would eat the poor technician, leaving warm water to spray all over the audience his blood spraying everywhere. Eventually, the alien is once again captured and the riders are set free. Needless to say, this ride was absolutely insane and would still be truly mind-blowing to this day. The ride spawned many urban legends regarding the attraction, and for good reason. The ride eventually became less and less popular throughout the years and became a walk-on, which, if you look at the other attractions surrounding it, kind of makes sense. But it's still disappointing. The thing is, you'd have been just a walk away from Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, the People Mover, Space Mountain, and the Carousel of Progress. This ride just didn't really fit the general vibe of Disney, but was still insanely cool and fit Tomorrowland perfectly. Unfortunately, in 2003, the end of this ride's life came with a retheme to Stitch's Great Escape, a ride based off Lilo and Stitch, which reused many of the ride elements from Alien Encounter. Unfortunately, this ride was not well liked by people, as it tried to be kid-friendly but was still a bit too scary and wasn't interesting enough. For older riders, the ride's most hated aspect was the chili dog burp effect, which was allegedly so disgusting that it caused tons of riders to nearly vomit. <laughs> By the end of the ride's life, stained the interior of the ride, making it always smell kind of disgusting. The ride was a failure in a lot of ways, and ended up going into seasonal operation in 2016. Seasonal operation means that the ride was only going to be open when the parks were the most busy during their peak seasons. The ride that officially closed its doors in 2018. Later, pictures of a skin stitch animatronic were uploaded online, officially marking the death of this ride. Pictures of the other animatronics were uploaded, which was a sad sight for fans of the OG extraterrestrial ride. The queue building was used for meet and greets until 2020. On April 26, 2022, a video was uploaded by Urbex Orlando, showing him going backstage in Tomorrowland and sneaking into the show building. This is one of the most fascinating and creepy urban legend videos that I have ever seen. OP is shaking and horrified throughout the entire video, which really makes you feel his fear. This was also the last video uploaded on his channel, which makes it that much more creepy. This attraction truly fascinates me, and every time I'm in Tomorrowland, I can't help but wonder what it would be like to ride one of these defunct experiences, especially considering the fact that most of the old stitch decor is still up. We'll talk about that later. Now let's take a trip to Anaheim, California, and discuss the human remains on Pirates of the Caribbean. At Disneyland in California, the prop skeletons have a deep and somewhat disturbing history. You see, back when the ride first opened in 1967, the special effects they used to make prop skeletons just didn't look very good at all. These fake skeletons just weren't good enough for Walt's new attraction, so they decided to go to a local UCLA medical center and used real human skeletons for these dead pirate props. And it worked. The skeletons fit perfectly and were the most immersive props around. It's not really known when these human remains were removed and replaced with props, but it was likely in the late 80s or early 90s. 
However, many believe that they didn't remove all the deceased body parts from the children's ride. The ride features a scene of a skeleton in a bed looking through a magnifying glass. Above this dead pirate is a skull on the headboard, the skull looking quite a bit different from the other skeletons that litter the ride. The skull and the crossbones under are worn and brown, and the skull is far more detailed and flawed than the others. For years, it was rumored that they forgot to remove this skull, and it was indeed one that used to belong to a living person. This creepy legend was spread throughout the world, both on the internet and during recess with kids trying to freak each other out. After discussion of this was known far and wide, Disney cast members actually confirmed that the skull is indeed that of a dead body. It's now normalized and just kind of a regular everyday fact known by Disney fans, but to me, it's still a somewhat gruesome and fascinating fact, and I find it really cool, honestly. Our final story is a very real one, which may change your perception of the parks when you're in them. In the late 1990s, a parkgoer dumped their loved one's ashes on the Haunted Mansion attraction, and it essentially birthed a decades-long trend. For the most part, there have been numerous incidents of scattering human remains every year. Disney attendees will place the powder in pill bottles, plastic bags, makeup cases, and even lipstick tubes to conceal them in their backpacks or purses. When they enter the park, they'll disperse them in flower beds, bushes, lawns, outside the park gates, during the fireworks show on certain rides like it's a small world or parts of the Caribbean, and the moat below Dumbo the Flying Elephant. However, the Haunted Mansion ride is the most popular destination for visitors to drop off ashes. The Haunted Mansion probably has so much human ashes in it that it's not even funny, a Disneyland employee said. When a situation like this occurs, ride operators must temporarily shut down the attraction and inform the public that the ride's been shut down due to technical difficulties, and initiate the HEPA cleanup, which refers to a thick filters that can catch even the smallest of particles. The procedure is enacted at least once per month, and it requires a park staff member to suck up the remains with an ultra-fine vacuum cleaner. Current and former custodians at Disney Parks say that identifying and vacuuming up human ashes is a signature and secret part of working at the happiest place on Earth. It is grisly for them, but a cathartic release for the bereaved, who say treating Disney Parks as the final resting place is the ultimate tribute to ardent fans. According to local state and Disney rules, this questionable practice is highly illegal. Anyone who engages in this unlawful activity will be removed from the park and face a potential misdemeanor charge. Yet these prohibitive measures haven't deterred some individuals from committing the dubious act. A former Disney cast member recounted one such case in a TikTok. A super common occurrence at the Haunted Mansion is people trying to throw their loved one's ashes into the Haunted Mansion. And when that happens, maintenance comes comes in a giant hazmat suit and sucks them up with a special vacuum cleaner and takes Aunt Bessie to the dump. But it's a very, very, very common occurrence at Disney World, particularly in the Haunted Mansion. Another case involved a woman who allegedly threw ashes into the water of Pirates of the Caribbean. She was caught in the act by ride operators, which resulted in an abrupt end, and they immediately notified the authorities. A witness described the substance as a baby powder that quickly dissipated. We reopened the attraction after determining that there was no hazard to our guests. The police chose not to file a report, as they couldn't obtain the adequate description of the suspect and the material unloaded into the water, although many believe that they were human remains. While one may think they're appropriately honoring their loved ones, it's crucial to realize that this deed is against the law. Perhaps Disney could solve this problem by setting designated areas to scatter ashes and charging a small fee to disperse them. By doing this, both parties would satisfy their desire with no issues. However, I feel like that's unlikely to happen, and feels out of character for the Disney parks. Until something like that does happen, you should honor those who have left us by writing their favorite attraction, or eating their preferred meal from the parks, and enjoying it in honor of them. As if you are to drop human remains at Disney, it's gonna all end up in the garbage, and not in the happiest place on Earth. So now that you've learned about Disney's hidden dark side, perhaps you'll look at the cherished locations differently. However, don't let these stories ruin the treasured parks for you. Please continue to enjoy them to the fullest. But remember that not all is sunshine and rainbows behind closed doors, and Disney is no different. So, I'm actually gonna show you, in person, the different places where some of the stuff took place. So join me as we take a look at the Disney parks. Now queuing up for the Haunted Mansion, which is actually haunted, according to many online urban legends. And the reason for this is not because someone died in it, but rather because many ashes have actually spread here. Thank you, Sam. Sometime in the 2000s, the ashes of the young boy were spread here, and cast members have claimed, cast members have claimed that there are like insane amounts of human remains on this ride. It's really popular to spot for people in hurry or to spread the ashes of their loved ones. So, Disney has industrial grade uh, vacuums to vacuum up all the ashes, which means if you do decide to do that, you're going into the trash. Not exactly the best resting place. As we queue up here, we see that many of these graves are they're jokes. You know, they're not actual people who have died. She moves. Always 
So, yeah, we didn't find any ghosts or anything, but it's still kind of interesting knowing the history of the place and I guess kind of the notion that you may be breathing in, like, human remains as you're in the ride. Creepy stuff. So we're here at Pirates of the Caribbean, and uh, so, as you've already learned, this ride is largely haunted by a ghost named Tim. He also stopped the boat for those dressed with pirate gear on. And as you see, I'm, I'm kind of like, dressed to the nines as a, as a little pirate scallywag guy. Which is now, talking to George. Um, George, if you can hear me? Uh, I would love if you stopped the boat at the, uh, the city scene with the song playing. That would be incredible. Let's see what happens. With all due respect, I come here in peace. I'm just a big fan of this ride, big fan of pirates. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Robinson, don't give a hoot, trick up me, honey, go home! That's us! Can't see me, but we're stopped at the Burning City scene. Um, oh, we're moving slowly, but, uh... I got, we got stopped where I asked to be stopped, so... <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, the boat did indeed stop where I asked George to stop the boat. Is that proof of anything? No. Uh, if you've been on this ride, it, it stops a lot. But it was still pretty cool in the moment, and it made me excited. Although, what was more odd about this ride was actually the people that we had on it in front of us, like in the boat. It was these incredibly rowdy kids, and at the start of it they were like standing up and splashing water at each other. Um, and this is, listen, I'm usually a very uh, well-tempered man uh, in most of my life, but when you mess with my pirate ride, I, I yell at the top of my lungs um, obscenities at them. And then they stopped, um, and then they kept going. I was fully within my right to yell at them, and there were no children on the boat, to be clear. And they also ended up getting permanently banned from Disney afterwards for doing a bunch of other rowdy shit, so ha, I was right. Dudes, I'm um, at... Tower of Terror, which allegedly is also haunted. There's this video of a guy, you already saw it because I showed you it already. I'm dripped out in Star Wars gear. Uh, I got a lightsaber built and everything. This thing's crazy, but that is unrelated. Um, look at the saber though. It's really cool. But yeah, so I don't think I'm going to see anything paranormal except for what's supposed to be there. But I should note that I'm on this ride now and I'm doing it. So it's happening. So I saw no ghosts on this ride, but something terrifying did happen. You saw that $250 lightsaber I had just bought. So I'd had it in the like bag thing that they give you, the horrible cheap sheath. And I had that sheath by my feet. And I didn't anticipate the ride to make it go that high. The cast members were just like, yeah, put it by your feet, it'll be fine. So what happened was that I put that there, and then when the big drop happens, basically, like, it's it's faster than freaking zero G. So it started floating up and almost went out of the chute um, to the open part of the park. And I grabbed it midair and slammed it down and just put my feet over it. Um, so it was almost a horrifying loss of way too much money for an overpriced product. Alright, so we've had our fun in Florida. Now, let's go to California. So, right behind me here, it's currently Star Wars Launch Bay. It wasn't always that. That used to be America Sings, where that tragedy happened, which was covered earlier. Um, I'm on the line for Space Mountain right now, which is supposedly haunted by a ghost by the name of Mr. Wonder. Now, if I see a tall ginger man who disappears, then that's our guy. If I don't, and maybe he's real, maybe he's not. We'll see. Space Mountain, it's here, it's real. Um, so, obviously not at Disney World is this urban legend a thing. No, it's only at this one on account of the fact that you can sit next to someone. It doesn't really work if you can, you know, you don't see the person behind you. Um, we're about to get on, and uh, I love this ride at Disney World, so like, I'm gonna love it at land. I, I probably wrote it a solid, maybe, 20 times when I was there um, earlier, so, yeah, it was fantastic. I'm alone, but if there's a ginger dude sitting next to me, I'm gonna freak out. The ride was incredibly fun, and not at all like I was expecting. No Mr. One Way, but still, amazing experience, and I'm glad I was able to ride it. There's nothing like the, uh, the post roller coaster hairdo that you get. I don't think it looks bad, honestly. I kind of appreciate it, um, but, uh, Good stuff. 
I then visited Pirates of the Caribbean, which honestly is a much, much better experience at Disneyland than it is at Disney World. It's much longer and more immersive and cool. And I saw the skull on the headboard. Pretty fascinating stuff. I, I don't got much else to say about it. Love it though. I ended up heading over to the Matterhorn, which kind of took a new meaning for me when I was there. It made the experience a lot more anxiety inducing than it would have been otherwise. However, I rode the ride just fine. I just came out of it kind of shaken up and slightly in pain. It's uh, an old roller coaster. I then went over to the Haunted Mansion and finally got to see the Hatbox Ghost in person once again. I once again think that Disneyland's version of the Haunted Mansion is better than the one at Disney World. I guess fight me in the comments if you disagree. I saved what I feel the most interesting is uh, for last, and that is extraterrestrial, or the, you know, remains of Stitch's Great Escape that still remain in Tomorrowland that you can actively see. Every time that I'm in Tomorrowland, I can't help but just kind of daydream about the place. Extraterrestrial. Look at the building and see the leftover facade from Stitch's Great Escape and the fact that they still haven't taken it down for some reason. Like, I know sometimes they still do meet and greets around there, but still, it's just so interesting that there's a whole ride in there, this entire theater that's just completely unused. A friend of mine who has many friends who work at Disney World told me that they actually use the old theater as a break room, which is genuinely so freaking cool. So every time I'm walking around tomorrow, every time I'm on the People Mover, I can't help but wonder what it looks like in there. Can't help but wonder if they're working on something, and how much of the original extraterrestrial ride remains. It's truly, truly fascinating. In fact, the People Mover actually goes through that building. It goes under the spire and then through the top, which shows a little diorama of Tomorrowland, or at least what it was envisioned to be. But it's just so interesting as you go through seeing the remains of it, and really just captures my imagination. So that wraps up for the video on the dark side of Disney parks, and I hope you enjoyed it. Apologies for how I look and sound. Uh, I've been battling a sickness, and I've been losing while the creation while I made this video, uh, which is why my voice goes from sounding normal to sounding like this. So, you know, my apologies. I hope you enjoyed it regardless. I do kind of want to address the tonal shift, um, because I don't want it to feel off, you know, talking about actual tragedies that happened, uh, and then going into just urban legendy and then being like, in the parks and stuff like that. Uh, I, I just really want to emphasize the weight of the situations that many of these people found themselves in, and the way it still affects people to this day, and how real that is. My deepest condolences go out to all the families, and I'm so incredibly sorry that any of this even happened. And I don't want it to seem like I'm using them for like clout or something like that, it's just stories that I found very, very interesting and captivating and kind of warning signs about this place, um, which is something that I find very fascinating, the sort of corruption of an innocent thing uh, is one of the most effective types of horror for me when it's done right, and when it's real things that happened, it's a truly fascinating and disturbing thing. I would also like to note that uh, if you want to hear about more of this Disney sort of talk, funnily enough, uh, my podcast, The Blood Manor Bloodcast, just released an episode the other day where I talked to Danielle from Z100. In that, we discussed Disney and the cremated ashes and all that stuff. It's a great show. I'd highly recommend you check it out. Do you love the Haunted Mansion? Have you heard the legends of the Haunted Mansion? No, I haven't. I don't think I have. Well, the main thing really is, is that uh, people spread their ashes at the Haunted Mansion. So that's where I want to be, too. Okay, That's my big go. thing. And when I die, I want to be at the Haunted Mansion. You want to be at the Haunted yeah, Mansion? Yeah, so that. Okay, so unfortunately, I, I, I'd hate to, to burst your bubble, but Disney actually has a protocol for this. Okay. Because it happens so much. Oh, I'm sure. And they basically close down the ride for maintenance <laughs> and have a bunch of people in hazmat that suits with giant HEPA filters, essentially industrial grade yeah. vacuums, and they vacuum up all of the debris. So I would be in a HEPA filter? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, this is my third video of March, and I'm going to go rest now. Thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video, and I'm out. I've been Raymundo2112, you've been a great audience member, and I'll see you in the next one. Good night.